What's going on guys welcome back to a brand new video this is web dev journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about the basics of web performance. So I think to understand you know performance you need to first have a solid understanding of how typing something into the address bar of the browser results into the page being rendered in the viewport. That's pretty much what I want you guys to know. I know that's very basic it really is but surprisingly enough guys there's a lot of people that don't know how, what's behind the scenes or what what happens right so that's why I want to get it across all right so let's just get right into it so the first thing is let's say that you're trying to here's your computer you're trying to make a uh, what they called you're trying to get wdj.com right so the first thing it's going to hit is going to be your ISP your internet service provider I don't know why I did a five but your internet service provider now this could be inside your house your company even in your mobiles right it doesn't really matter so what the ISP is going to do is it's going to go to the DNS domain name system domain name system right and it's going to say it's going to tell the DNS hey uh, where is wdj.com so the DNS system you could think of it as a phone book like for every you know website there is there's an actual IP address right there's an actual IP address and let's say for in this case, DNS is going to respond. Oh well, WDJ.com actually lives in you know one two three point four five six point seven eight nine. Now here lies the first major bottleneck. It's right here, this little step right here. When the ISP, that's a big. I don't know why it's so big, but <laughs> but basically that right there, this is where it happens. Our first major bottleneck because the ISP for every new host host name you have in your file this is going to happen so let's say that your site you know you're requesting is a, using externally hosted fonts because I'm pretty sure you know my website you know we all have websites that have you know external fonts JavaScript libraries images or even videos or even other you know third-party services that you're using right well all those is going to ha is going to do this every single time for every unique host name all right so this happens a lot regardless this happens quite a bit okay now to do away with some of this you know um performance overhead the domain name the to ip address association will probably be cached at numerous different steps your isp for one might cache this if you have a router within you know you're connecting your your router to your isp that might uh let me actually put a little router right here this is a router this might actually cache it and also your computer will cache this so next time you you try to visit my page because i know you you guys will <laughs> i don't even have a page but anyway next time you try to visit my page you're gonna have you know it's not gonna go through this little process again looking through the dns because more than likely it's already cached and that's why the second time you do these things or you try to do these things you you see that sometimes the browsers are faster and that's because it's cached closer to you maybe your isp cached it your router or even your computer cached it so that's why just to let you know that's why uh, sometimes it's it's faster uh the second time around now i'm gonna do this in blue now that we have our ip address our uh the ip address for wdj our computer now has something that's okay i'm sorry um i'm gonna say wdj server right here server so now that we know what the ip address is for WDJ, something called the TCP handshake is um, initialized. And this is where they exchange identity keys and other information to establish a temporary connection and working relationship. Now this step also determines your, um, what kind of connection do you have? A secure connection or not a secure connection? So now we have the connection. So at this point, this is where the browser is going to send Sorry, it's going to send a um, HTTP GET request for the default, you know, file. That may be, you know, typically it's just the index.html or index.php or index.js or something similar to that, right? So um, that the time it takes for the browser to finally receive, you know, it's sending that GET request and then the server responds back. So that time, this time, this whole time, I'm getting confused. So the time it takes for the browser to finally receive the first byte of the actual page it's looking for is measured in time to first byte or TT 
FB. Now, if you messed around with, you know, Google's uh, Lighthouse or any any other, you know, um, web page performance and all that, you you more than likely seen this uh, term before. And that's what it means, right? Time to first bite. This is the actual time to actually get the the one packet or the first bite of the actual page it's looking for. That's what that really means, okay? I should really stop saying computer. It should be, br God damn it. It should be browser instead of computer. So browser, this is our browser, and it, you know, to get, that's much more better to understand. And over here too, I made a mistake. Computer is supposed to be browser. So once this happens, the time to first bite, we actually have our HTML file right now. Oops, not file, HTML. And the browser, it starts reading it from top to bottom, to bo top to bottom, and then parsing the data, right? So that means that HTML is turned to the, into the DOM tree and the CSS is turned into the S CSS OM tree. Now, while it's reading from top to bottom, right, we have external files that are assets that we're going to encounter. Like I said before, the images, the fonts, the videos, whatever you might think of, this process is going to have to take place for every single one of those, you know, external assets that we have. Um, but in the case of JavaScript though, the browser actually stops everything else and waits for the file to be fully downloaded. Why you might ask? Because there's a good chance of JavaScript wants to make changes in either the DOM or the CSOM or both. This is what's known as rendering or render blocking. Whatever rendering was happen was happening stops and is literally blocked for as long as the browser is waiting for the JavaScript file to be fully loaded and then fully executed. Once all that, uh, you know, the parsing is done, the rendering can begin to, well, to start render again, right? To start reading from bottom to top again, wherever it left off. So once that all is done, the browser combines the DOM and the TSM um, to style, layout, paint, and composite the document in the viewport. This is the process that actually creates what you see in the browser, right? The metric time to first contentful Contentful paint refers to how long it takes for all this to happen. So as you can see, there is a lot going behind the scenes when a website or an app is loaded into the browser. And obviously what I did right now, the breakdown that I did is severely simplified. So if you really want to learn more, just Google it. But honestly, this is just a high overview of what's happening. What's important is to remember what's actually happening that way we could identify identify bottlenecks and add performance enhancements to get past them as quickly as possible. Now, before I, I leave you guys, I do want to uh, just, you know, talk about a little bit about bottlenecks, some bottlenecks that you may or may not know about. And these are simple bottlenecks that anybody could prevent right now. So anyways, let's just start with the server side, right? So server, you know, bottlenecks would probably be somewhere around the processor speed, available RAM, storage type, available bandwidth, shared resources, just to list a few. But, you know, some ways around it is obviously get a sufficiently powerful hosting, you know, explore dynamic cloud options, AWS, uh, Azure, Google. We talked about this where where if a server can't handle enough requests, it will spin up another server. So that way, you know, requests will be split between those two servers and uh, performance will be better. You know, we talked about this already. Uh, optimize your files for the server and also add a CDN to your service. CDNs will be probably the best option, uh, mostly all around. <laughs> just just adding CDN so that thing so that way, you know, whatever you're requesting is just closer to the browser, or whatever, to where wherever it is, right? To the resource. Anyways, another thing that we could do oh, or talk about is sending files, right? We're always sending files between server and browser. So some of the files is just like JSS and CSS bundles, large JSS, CSS bundles, and also large image, fi image files, right? Ways around this is obviously modularize, mod, 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 dude, you know what I'm talking about. JS and CSS, man, that word is going to be eating. Modularize, modularize. Modulize, I think that's what it is. JS and CSS. If you work with React, or, I think I already said this, man. Just just thinking about it or trying to say it. Anyways, if you work with React or Vue, they, they mostly already do it right off the bat. But anyways, you know, uh, take advantage of HTTPS, secure. Dude, grab a certificate, uh, SSL certificate. All of, You get one for free. 
it's night and day between HTTP and HTTPS when it comes to performance, all right? Because HTTPS uses something called multiplexing. If you don't know what that is, just Google it. But it's a hell of a lot better. I'm telling you, it's better. Just do it. It's free. I don't know why people wouldn't do it. You know, use async defer JS, uh, defer non-critical CSS, meaning that, you know, load all the important CSS first. And then, you know, at the very end, uh, load any you know, not critical CSS. Also, lazy load images. I've talked about this in the last video. Don't worry, some of these things we are gonna be talking about during the series, but lazy loading images and also compress all files using gzip and, you know, or or you could do, you don't have to do both of them, but gzip or brotly. I think that's what it is, how it says it, uh, brotly, B-R-O-T-L-I. Broadly, that's, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. But anyways, you compress, you could compress all your files using gzip and broadly. Um, but those are some of the ways that you could, you know, avoid sending large files, right? Large images or large CSS, uh, JS bundles, and all these things. So, anyways, that's it, guys, for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. In the next video, we are going to be talking about, you know, images, how to optimize images. So look out for that, guys. I am trying to make out make more videos, guys. I really am, but there really isn't enough time in my hands to do these things. Honestly, I just don't. I have to pick up my kids from work. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and explain everything that I do in my life, but honestly, I just don't have enough time in my hands to do these videos. And when I do, I try to, you know, make a good quality video for you guys. So I hope you enjoy the video, guys. I hope you did learn something. And if you did, hit that like button. Comment down below and, you know, that would actually help me. Hitting the like button helps me. I don't think commenting helps me that much. I haven't studied uh, the YouTube algorithm. Just commenting and hitting the like button would be great. And also, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video where I said we're going to be talking about optimizing images. So, I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys take care. Thank you.